Welcome back to the lab guys. Today I'm going to be going over backup basics. Basically what are backups, why they're important, and what are the different types of backups you can do on a system. So here we go. Backups. Why are backups important? So backups are important because they allow us to restore. And restoration is a big deal because, well, let's all be real, end users like to do end user things. Uh, layer 8 issue, closing ticket. But real point being is a lot of times you'll be surprised. Not even your, It can even be happen to yourself. There's a lot of times my, I myself have actually gone and make sure I take backups and... The reason being is, say I'm doing a vCenter upgrade, say I'm updating, you know, doing a cumulative update on Exchange, or I'm doing an update on SQL, that ensures that if something does happen, I can go ahead and restore that. And that's what backups are. They're a point that allows you to restore anything so that way, hey, if you lose something, you mess up, if something doesn't, you know, update itself properly, you have an issue, that can all be fixed by a backup. Now, there are some other things. There's some. There's a thing called snapshots. I'm not going to go over snapshots this video. This video is about backups. Yes, I know there's snapshots out there, and you can use snapshots you know, inside you know, your hypervisor to make sure that you can restore a machine if something happens. Today's video is about backups, so let's get in, all right? So the first one I want to talk about is a full backup, all right? A full backup stores a copy of all files, typically occurs automatically according to like a preset schedule uh, if you use veeam if you use rapid recovery uh storage crafts a bunch of them out there basically you'll set a time all right it'll go out look at all those files look at all those blocks and say hmm what do i need and it goes and just grabs everything it doesn't it doesn't actually even care it just says i need everything that could possibly get on this drive everything that's there all the use space take it mm, it's gonna grab it back it up all right. The advantage of full backups is the ease of restoration. Restoring a file requires only the file name, location, and data from which the restore data. All right. The restoration is relatively straightforward as long as the backup files from that date or time are available. So, I mean, basically, a full restoration, boom, you grab that, you could do a, a full restore. The thing is, though, you know, Full backups are fairly comprehensive. You're going to look at every single file, every single piece of data, everything on that machine, and you're going to be able to go in. Well, you're not going to be able to. The machine, or I should say the agent's going to go in. The backup software is going to go in and grab everything and back it up. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, that means you have everything, but that also means that every time it runs a backup, you're doing a full backup, meaning that even if a file didn't change, you're still going to back it up. And guess what? If that file is one gig and it never changes and it's there for the next nine years, you're going to be backing it up however it is for the next nine years you'll be having that one gig file. So that's where I'm going to go into my next part. The next two are a really big deal. The first one is called incremental backups. All right. So number two, incremental backups. Incremental backups save space. All right. The reason how they do this is by backing up only the files that have been created or changed since the last backup. All right. The advantage of incremental backups is that the volume of data backed up at each iteration is much smaller, which in turn saves the space on backup medium and uses less network bandwidth. So what this basically means is that a lot of times with Veeam, Rapid Recovery, or any other backup softwares, you actually go in and you'll do a first what they call like a base image or basically a full backup. And what that means is you're going in and you're taking every single kind of a snapshot of a way or kind of like a, hey, this is exactly what this looked like at this point in time there's our reference. Now, after that, every time, as long as nothing major has changed, it'll do what they call an incremental. All right. Incremental backups. All right. What that means is that it's going to look at every file that's changed and it's going to grab it. Only things that have changed or been created since and store it. All right. What this means, though, is that incremental backups increase computing overhead and because each file must be compared with the last backup as well as the incremental increases to determine whatever data was new. So just as I was saying, there's going to be times that it's going to go ahead, you're going to take a full backup, it's going to look at all those files, and just as I was saying there, it's going to have a lot of computing overhead to actually figure out what's changed, what's not. Now, that's not a big deal. A lot of times what you'll do is you'll set backup incrementals, and if but guess what? If it's often enough, it really won't have to look at that many files. With file servers, there's a lot of times I actually set them to a two-hour increment throughout the day, especially for a larger company, because what that means is that every two hours, we're going ahead and hitting an incremental backup, and we're taking a backup for anything that's been changed on a major file server. And this is very great for anybody that you know has an accounting firm or anything like that, and they've got people in there constantly changing things, updating QuickBook files. It gets, it gets intense pretty quick. All right. Many enterprises backup strategies include a combination of full backups and incremental backups, just as I was talking about. 
All right, so for example, running a full backup once per week on weekends when network and computing resources demand are lower and scheduling incremental backups on weekdays. Backing up files with combination enables a restoration that is not quite, that does not require looking through or merging more than a week's uh, like backups worth of data, all right? And that's really helpful when you're having to restore or you're having to actually keep a ton of backups on a smaller space. So instead of you, you know, doing a full backup every night, you're only keeping a full backup every weekend and the incrementals in between and what's changed. And that means if you need to restore, all you're gonna do is grab the full backup, the incremental, put that over, boom. That restores your machine, which I have plenty of videos I'm gonna be making on actually, I'm actually gonna be looking into Veeam here and showing you guys how I operate my Veeam here in my home lab and you know the ways that it can actually maybe affect you, know, you because they do give you 10 free machines and it's very helpful, especially if you do have some family stuff like I do. And I like to make sure that that's all backed up. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Some similar strategies limit the impact on disk space backup storage by copying folders, full backups from disk to tapes, which are then stored off site. Now, that's, you know, that's up to you. You know, tape backups is kind of a thing. A lot of, I, honestly, that's kind of gone nowadays. I'm not gonna lie. So a lot of tape backups is now involved in what they call, you know, e-folder or cloud backups. So what they're doing is they're actually going ahead and pushing all of this data from your local storage up to a cloud. So that way then basically if you know the whole building were to burn down or if something were to happen, someone took your whole storage, you can actually still restore from the cloud. All right, so that's still going on with incremental backups and that's just kind of an overall thing with any backups. You can basically push, and it's kind of disaster recovery, you can basically push or what they call replicate, I should say, from your local storage that's here in your data center up to the cloud or to another site. You know, a lot of people do disaster recovery. Um, some businesses have two locations, if not more, and so a lot of times they'll pick two and they'll basically set up one and the other. One will be the main, one will be the basically the secondary, and they'll replicate between each other so that way if anything were to happen at either site, they've got backups. All right, let's move on to number three, differential backups. Differential backups are similar to incremental backups, all right, except that each backup operation stores the new and updated files since the last full backup, all right? So for example, if a full backup was performed on Sunday and a file changed to Monday, that file will be a part of every single differential backup until the next full backup. All right, does that make sense? So using back differential backup simplifies recovery because only the last backup and last differential backup is needed to create a complete restoration. As with incremental backups, Differential backups need to compare current and already backed up files to identify any changes. However, differential backups require more space and network compared to incremental backups, all right? So kind of something to look at there. Now with Veeam, I do f base images and you know incremental backups. So now let's go on to the last and final one, which is virtual full backups. Virtual full backups use a database to track and manage backed up data, which Helps avoid some of the pitfalls of other backup methods, but doesn't always, you know, the full copy or replica is only taken once and does not need to be taken again as long as the storage medium, typically like a shared storage, you know, something with iSCSI, something like that, remains unchanged, all right? The virtual backup periodically synchronizes backup data to the database, meaning that every once in a while when things do change, it will synchronize it. Virtual full backups are generally automatically backed up by backup software. The user experience appears the same as a full backup restoring one file or an entire disk is a matter of choosing a preferred recovery point and the, and the file or files to recover. All right, so that's the final one. That's virtual full backups. I'll be actually going over virtual full backups. Basically, that's kind of what they do now in rapid recovery in Veeam with agent lists. Basically, you go in, you add in your host into ESXi, or I should say into Veeam, you can add in your ESXi host, and that then allows you to grab what virtual machines that you want and actually take backups of those without having to install an agent. The other way is installing an agent and normally the agents would do either a full backup or a base backup as we were talking and then do an incremental backup until a major change has happened on the disk. And to kind of list some of those, some of those major changes that would happen on the disk is you know drive expansion so say even if you add 100 gigs or 10 gigs or 5 gigs, if you change the actual size or block size of how many blocks are actually on that disk, it will cause a new full backup to happen. So one of the things that we've seen often is don't just add a smallest amount of space. Sometimes you need to go in and you actually need to add in a large amount of space, especially on a file server, because the last thing you want to do is keep only adding in 10 gigs 
And then the next thing you know is you've filled up your back repository because you're adding 10 gigs every day and you're causing a new you know, full backup to go off or a new base image, I should say. So some things to think about, guys, some basics of backup. So thanks for sticking around. And as always, guys, I'll see you in the lab.